What's going on guys? So I am going to be filming inside today. Normally I like to film outside. The lighting is a little bit better. You don't hear this echo. Um, we have a problem outside. There is like a ladybug apocalypse happening outside. See all that? See all that? Hey. Oh, gross, it's on me. Get it off, sick. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Bible Vlog. Today we are looking at Matthew chapter 21 and the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. All right, so at this point in Jesus' ministry, he's no longer trying to hide the fact that he is the Messiah. Now, remember how Jesus would heal people or some miracle would happen and then he'd be like, Please don't tell anyone what happened. But then people would be like shouting their miracles from the rooftop. Well, Jesus knows that his time is winding down now. And during this last week before his crucifixion, he deliberately fulfills several messianic prophecies. So look at verses two through five here. In verse two, talking to his disciples, Jesus says, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Now let me point out something that a lot of people miss. There is a miracle that happens here that is often overlooked. The fact that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey that had never been ridden before. Now, Matthew doesn't mention the fact that it hadn't been ridden, but the other gospels point this out to us. Now picture Jesus riding this animal for the very first time, and they're going down crowded city streets in Jerusalem with people cheering. They're waving palm branches in front of this animal. Even many domesticated animals that have been ridden would panic in this situation and buck their rider off. Yet this donkey walks completely calmly down the street with all of this commotioning happening around him. Now as Jesus is riding in, look at the crowd's reaction in verse 9. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save now. The people were literally crying out as oppressed people to their savior for deliverance. All of these people were publicly acknowledging that Jesus was the Messiah. Now, needless to say, this entire event was rocking the city of Jerusalem. All right, so after Jesus rides in, the very first place that he goes is the temple. And once he arrives, he finds people buying and selling in there. Now, this doesn't sound like that big of a deal at first, almost like a marketplace, except that what was happening was these money changers and merchants were dealing with people dishonestly. See, the temple is where people would come from all over Israel to worship and make sacrifices and the people selling in the temple, they were being fraudulent in their transactions. They were taking advantage of people in God's house and Jesus has enough of it. So look at verses 12 through 13. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now granted, we don't see this exact same situation happening today, but yet the same type of thing does still happen. Promises of rewards and blessings if you give to certain ministries. Listen, I do think you should be a cheerful giver and the Bible talks about that. I believe that you should tithe and support your local church. But I have seen some preachers and evangelists get up and take advantage of people like what the Bible talks about here. I literally heard a preacher one time tell a congregation, if you give in tens, you'll reap in tens. If you give in hundreds, you'll reap in hundreds. Thousands, you'll get thousands, referring to the dollar amount that you would give to his ministry. Can I tell you something? This guy was a con artist. He was only looking to take advantage of people. Honestly, it makes me mad even to this day. Maybe you never read the story in the Bible about the widow who put in two mites with Jesus watching her and Jesus said that she gave more than anyone else because she gave all she had. Always remember this, guys. Let God lead you and guide you in your giving. Support your local church, but then be open to God leading you to bless others. God wants to bless you, including financially, but we have to learn to trust him when he leads us to be generous. All right, last thing. Look over at verse verses 23 through 27. And again, the religious leaders are trying to trap Jesus so they can accuse him of blasphemy. So they ask him, by what authority are you doing all these miracles and healings? Well, look at verse 23. Now, when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, referring to John the Baptist, where was it from? From heaven? or from men. 
And they reasoned among themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude for all of the people count John the Baptist as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. I love Jesus. How frustrating for these guys to constantly be outwitted. Jesus was only going to lay down his life at the appropriate time and it would be on God's timetable and not the religious leaders. Jesus knows that his crucifixion is coming up, but he still has so much to do before that time comes. Guys, that is going to do it for us today with chapter 21. Now, there is a lot that we weren't able to cover in the chapter today, so please make sure and go ahead and read it for yourself. So important for you to be in the word, not just hearing it from me. All right. Thank you as always for joining us today. So appreciate each and every one of you being here. Come back tomorrow for the final chapter of the week, chapter 22. Hopefully all those bugs will be gone. Until then, hope you all have an amazing day. I love your faces and I will see you tomorrow.